right, welcome fifth grade. Uh, this is our podcast over chapter one uh, of Latin America, but we'll be using uh, a couple chapters uh, in this textbook, so we're going to call it Unit One. All right. So the first lesson of uh, chapter one is called. Um, here's a note style like you guys do for chapter one, lesson one. So as we go through um, each region, so the first region is Latin America. We're going to be talking about the landforms uh, and the waterways. So if you just make like kind of a graph chart in your notes, if you want to, you don't really have to, but this is what I suggest you do. Uh, and then as you go through, you know, you can write in uh, each little fact uh, about the various lessons and stuff uh, so that you just have a more organized uh, way of your notes. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the first thing we need to do is identify where is Latin America. All right, so here's a map of North and South America or uh, in the Western Hemisphere. And Latin America is defined as south of Mexico to the Caribbean islands uh, all the way down uh, to the very tip of Chile and Argentina uh, in Latin America or in South America. So this is where Latin America is. All right, so the first part we're going to talk about is Mexico and Central America which are also, uh, we're going to identify them as Middle America. Okay. Because they are located in the middle of North and South America. All right. So it roughly stretches 2,500 miles uh, from the top to bottom. That'd be the same distance as going from Los Angeles to New York. So it's, it's a bit of a stretch. Um, the major mountain range in Mexico is called the Sierra Madre Mountains. All right, uh, which are on either side of a large central plateau, and this is where most of Mexico's population lives, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, with the mountains really make it difficult for people to travel to and from um, the central plateau because uh, in Mexico the roads aren't as nice as what you'd think they are around here. Uh, so you know it just it makes travel more difficult in uh, Latin America. Um, so the east and west coasts are very narrow coastal plains. Um, Central America is an isthmus. Isthmus is a tiny land surrounded by that has water on two sides of it. Uh, so it's, you know, it has its challenges, it has its good and bad. Uh, but we're, we'll look at both of those uh, as the unit progresses. Um, there are narrow plains that run alongside the coasts. That's mainly because there's mountain ranges that run all throughout uh, Central America and Mexico. Uh, so it kind of you know, there's, I think of it as, you can think of the coastline like this if you were travel across. It's flat, and then there's the mountain ranges, and then it's flat again. That's kind of what, uh, if you were to look at a side view of Latin America, that's what it would look like. Uh, so between the plains uh, are these rugged mountains, as I just said, um, and some of them are still active volcanoes. Right. So let's look at a physical map here. So this is just of uh, Mexico. All right, and I wanted to sh I wanted to show you this uh, so that you can see um, what I'm talking about here. So here are the mountain ranges uh, that extend down, and again, here are these coastal plains. All right, so here's the mountain ranges here. Okay, again, another coastal plain, and the mountain ranges kind of go like this. All right, so this is all mountains wherever you see Sierra Madre, that means mountain. Okay, but then here is this giant plateau. A plateau is a is like a mountain it's elevated uh, in terms of elevation but then it's kind of like a mountain that's been cut in half so that it's a flat place on top but you notice that there's not a lot of flat land in Mexico for farming which um, we'll get into a little bit later but these mountain ranges really run um, all throughout from if you go all the way up into Alaska all the way down to the southern tip of Chile and Argentina are uh, various mountain ranges so mountain ranges are uh, a big part of everyday life uh, in Latin America. Okay, so here is, oops, here is Central America. And again, you know, pointing out, talking about these mountain ranges here. So here, again, there are some more mountain ranges uh, that cut through, okay, some of these various countries, all right, within Latin America. All right, and then this is what we're talking about here, this tiny stretch of land. So if I were to, so from, 
actually the isthmus of uh, the isthmus is the entire entire region so all of this here all of this land here okay this is what we call an isthmus a tiny narrow strip of land all right okay so let's move on to the Caribbean all right uh, there are two different types of islands in the Caribbean these smaller item islands are made up of coral or skeletons of tiny sea animals an example of that is the Bahamas and so there's not really a lot of um, what you would think of in terms of uh, soil uh, like what we have it's very uh, like if you think of sand uh, the sand around here is very soft because um, it's from rocks the sand there is it's from coral so it's a little bit sharper a little bit finer um, in detail it's actually really cool to walk on um, so the larger mountains or the larger islands uh, in this area or are actually tops of under underground mountains okay now the map i'll show you what that looks like here in a moment um, and these are once active volcanoes some of the islands still are or still have active volcanoes in them um, so earthquakes are very common in this area examples of that would be cuba jamaica hispaniola uh, and puerto rico okay so as we see here uh, so talked about the Bahamas being coral all right so here are the Bahama Islands okay and then all of these little islands down this way all right these are all also islands that are made up of coral and also along uh, in through here is actually a great barrier reef that stretches up this way and I know that because I've been to Belize and you can theoretically walk from Nicaragua all the way up uh, to past Belize I think actually into the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico is as far as it reaches. So it's a pretty big uh, reef, but that's again all made up of you know coral, um, you know skeletal skeletons of of tiny uh, tiny ancient animals. Okay, and then the next ones that we talked about were the larger islands, which are tops of mountains. All right, and so Hispaniola is actually Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Okay. Um, Cuba they talked about being one of them so here's Cuba all right Jamaica another one and then Puerto Rico okay so you can see that there's actually if we look at the change in the water here that's you know the lighter the blue that means the higher in elevation it is you can see that there is a mountain range that these islands are top of that runs down through here and out this way okay and then there's actually another mountain range that's over in here all right and so this is why this is that's why there's a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes in this region of the world is because uh, these mountains are sitting on top of tectonic plates that are constantly moving all right you learn about tectonic plates in science all right and our last one is South America all right, um, which has the Andes Mountains, which is the most impressive landform in South America. It runs 5,500 miles, so it is the longest mountain range in South America with an elevation of over 20,000 feet. All right, so planes fly around 30,000 feet, so it, you know, it's pretty high up there. Next time you go on a flight, a long flight, and you're 30,000 feet up, just look down and imagine 10,000 feet below you or a third of the way down. Is where the top of the Andes Mountains are. Um, so to be able to farm in the Andes, since it takes up quite a large chunk of real estate, people had to develop uh, different steps or different um, ways of farming uh, in the Andes. All right, um, but the Andes uh, also have rolling highlands that spread across uh, Brazil, Venezuela, Ghana and other countries um, the further south are pampas or a large grass area that stretches through Argentina and Uruguay and then the eastern highlands of the Andes around the Amazon basin and really the Amazon basin has the second largest river in the world and um, contains you know one of the world's largest uh, tropical rainforests as well all right so here's a map of South America Okay. 
So here again, you know, we're talking about the Andes Mountains uh, that form here. Here's the eastern coast of the Andes. All right, and notice how far they stretch down. You know, they take up, you know, this is over 5,000 miles. You know, what they say, 5,500 miles. I'm gonna put a little plus sign there. All right, notice how much of it takes up, okay? And then we talked about the Pampas, all right? So here are those grasslands uh, over here in a region uh, known as Patagonia. So if you own anything, uh, with the term Patagonia on it. Um, that's where it came from because that's where it was tested uh, more than likely. That's where the company is from or where the company tests everything. And then here um, in this pink area, this is the Amazon Basin. All right, so all the way from the Pampas here, including the highlands, because right, the highlands, the water goes down into the Amazon Basin. So here is it the slide previous slide says it makes uh, it takes up over one third of uh, South America all right so you can think of it this way a third of South America is the Amazon basin a third of it are these grasslands or this or the pampas and then a third of it are the Andes mountains all right so the last point that we need to go over are Latin America's waterways all right so rivers serve as a natural highway uh, in places where it's hard to build roads which is quite a lot of Latin America uh, just because um, of all the mountains and the rough terrain that they're there 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 are a lot of roads but they're dirt roads so a lot of times during rainy seasons and stuff they get washed out so it's really hard to impass uh, on them so uh, they use rivers instead to transport goods um, fish you know obviously fishing in the rivers is going to provide a natural resource for them uh, as well as the river's power provides hydroelectric uh, electricity. Um, the Amazon River, which we talked about, the second largest river in the world, flows some 4,000 miles pretty much across uh, South America. All right, and it carries about 20% of the world's fresh water. Um, the Amazon has over 1,000 tributaries that give it its power. A tributary is a river that flows into uh, a river, a smaller river that flows into a larger river. And then lastly, the major rivers and bodies of water located in Latin America, um, you can see them listed here. I'm not gonna go over all of them. Um, you should know them though, uh, just because they're what give um, Latin America, it's really its highways uh, for trading. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions, bring them to class and we'll discuss them then. If not, um, we'll get going on our activities when you get to class. I'll see you guys later.